Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to be playing through a brand new game I just got in called Runar. This is the latest game from Ludus Magnus Studios, and was successfully funded on Kickstarter a little while back, and now they have late pledges opened up. So if you're still interested in checking this one out or grabbing this with all the Kickstarter stuff, this will be your last opportunity until they close that down, which I'm not sure when that'll happen. So like I said, this is the latest game from Ludus Magnus Studios. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly uh, an hour to an hour and a half to play and is a competitive game where players are going to be competing with their fellow players to gain the most victory points. You can play this game as a one-off game or as a campaign where every game that you play is going to have an impact on the next game and will have some different variants with it. And your Vikings that you're going to be playing can also be upgraded throughout the campaigns as you play through them. So giving you lots of different options and replayability. Now with this one, there's also an enemy that you can also include in it in certain missions. And again, in the campaign, each one of these scenarios will dictate whether or not the nemesis is going to be used. For the game that I'm going to be playing, this is the only one that was included in the scenario. And I know other channels have included the enemies. So I just wanted to show you what this game plays like as it was presented and without the enemy in there. So it's just going to be player versus player. And I'm going to be playing off a two player game to give you a good idea how this one plays and help you decide whether or not this is one you want to try to pick up. So as always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow, be able to produce this content. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also give that notification bell a ring and I'll let you, never, let you know whenever I drop new stuff, such as new teaching videos, more playthroughs, Kickstarter coverage, unboxings, and many other types of videos. I'm always open to hearing from you as well. Let me know if there's suggestions you want or things that you would like to see from the channel. I love starting a conversation. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Now, I do also want to point out a couple of other things before getting into the, the game. First off, all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change and will look a lot better in the final production copy of the game. The other important thing I want to point out is that I'm still working with a trial version of the rules, more or less. Now, most of these are finalized, but some of these might change a little bit. Again, just like the prototype, some of this stuff is subject to change still. So if you're watching this and you have the game already as it has already been produced and all that in the future, then the, some of the rules that you see or some of the things that I do might not line up 100%. And so that is some of the things that they might have changed by the time that this gets to production and to you as a final production copy. So just keep that in mind as you watch and I will do my best to not make any errors. But again, if you notice anything, you can post those in the comments down below and I'll respond to them best I can or be able to answer questions as I am able to. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. All right, so moving into the game, the first thing I wanna do is kind of break down some of this that you're looking at so you understand what is going on in the game. So moving into the board itself, it's going to be broken down into four quadrants if you're playing a four player game. Now I've have, I have this set up for a two player game, so this board is actually folded on itself. And then each one of the sections of the board is broken down into a quadrant for that player. So we have the bears over here and the walruses over here. In each player's quadrant, so this section here, it is broken down into four mini quadrants, and each one of these is going to have a ruin in it, and there's going to be nine ruins on that small square. These are the spaces that players or things are going to occupy throughout the game, and as players move around, they'll be moving from one space to another that has one of those marks on it. So that'll explain that. From there, then, we have the player boards, and the player boards are going to have all the different things on them. First off, they're going to keep track of the number of ruins, uh, ruins that the players gather, both yellow and blue. And they're going to have their own deck of cards that is going to be comprised of the three heroes cards. And these will determine how you activate those heroes and then what kind of uh, cubes that they get. Now, throughout the game, players are going to gain cubes either in their general supply, or each player can also hold a number of cubes in their personal supply that only that player can or that character can use. Throughout the game, players are going to be playing a card into their active area, and this is going to dictate the cubes that they're going to gain from that card potentially, and the hero that will activate. And as you will see a little bit later, that will dictate who's, who's the active character out of the character you're playing as. Finally, you have a memory slot. This is where the card is going to go after you've resolved all the effects of it and will give you potentially additional cubes at the end of that, which I'll show you. 
At the top of the board are going to be spots for the enemy card. So as you do damage to, uh, to your uh, enemy heroes, you're going to be able to potentially start taking cards from them and placing them in these areas. And once you have three cards in the areas, then you'll also you'll start gaining victory points and then they'll be going into a separate area from there. Other than that, you'll have your three heroes. And in this game, you'll be able to choose from a whole collection of different Vikings. And then if you have the Kickstarter, you'll have even more choices to make from there. And each one of these heroes has special abilities and their card is double-sided. So once you upgrade them, you'll have even more abilities that that character can use. And then each one of the characters will have a number of defense uh, points that they have throughout the game that as they take damage, they can discard those instead as long as it's not direct damage. Other than that, uh, the mission itself, we have to, we have the board here and the victory points down at the bottom. As events come up, they're going to fill up these slots and based on the number of players, there's only a certain number of slots. So in a two player game, there's only going to be four slots. So once the final spot, uh, spot is filled, then the game is over and then the players are going to determine who wins. Now the mission itself is going to dictate a couple of things and is also going to tell you additional uh, objectives that the players have or ways to gain victory points. For example, with this game, we have the Supreme Stell and this player, uh, the player or players who have the uh, Stell, which is their, their building, their tower that they're going to build with the most sections in their territory gains two victory points. Un, uh, unfortunately, the player that has the least or the lowest in this game, one is, or since it's a two player, one is going to have this and one potentially is not, that player is going to lose victory points. So the players are going to want to either be have the most or tie for the most so that they don't lose points for that one. Next, we have murderer. So the player or players who have the most um, of these chalices are going to gain two points two more victory points in the, the game and again the player that has the least is going to lose a victory point so players are going to, have to keep an eye on all of those different things so that they're not losing victory points and hopefully gaining them at the end of the game other than that let's go ahead and move into the game itself and our player over here is the starting player so again that player is going to have three cards in their hands and these cards will dictate which characters can activate i'm going to go ahead and reveal these so you can kind of see what we're working with here so we have one for Bjorn, and his this card here is going to give us a white cube, which is a wild, which we can use for a lot of different things. And then we also have two for Arian. And with these guys, uh, the turn itself is broken down into six phases. And these phases, the first phase is the tactics phase. And during this phase, a lot of the times this will be skipped at the beginning of the game. But later on, this phase allows you to spend your cubes on any of these characters and carry out a couple of different things. You can do a tactics, which allows you to draw additional cards into your hand. So if you have a bunch of cards that aren't really useful to you or you're really hoping to activate a particular character, this will let you draw three additional cards from your deck and choose which ones to keep. Uh, from there, then you have a number, a number of different options within that, such as being able to move your characters around during that phase, getting into better positions, as you're only going to be activating one character, but being able to do different things as you're going to see as the game progresses gives you a chance to potentially switch to other characters and carry out all kinds of different things. So the tactics phase gives you that option to start getting people and things into position for the next part of your, your turn, which is when you're going to activate an individual character. You can also choose to fortify. So if your characters are taking a bunch of damage and you have white cubes either in their personal supply or up here, you can spend those to gain additional shields back up to their maximum number of shields that they can potentially have based on the number of cubes you spend and a number of other things. So again, we're not going to do that. So we're into the second phase where we're going to be choosing a card to activate that character. And let's see. Um, let's go ahead and go with this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and place this in my active slot. These are going to stay in my hand. Now this one's going to give me a blue and a yellow cube. So those will go into my main pool and your main pool does have a maximum number of cubes you can hold as well. So if you ever have or gain more cubes than that, you'll have to choose which ones to keep and which ones to discard. 
All right, and then my character, this character is this one here. So he's kind of like far away from the ge the uh, the different gems that we're trying to get. So he's not really going to be able to go after that. So it might be beneficial just to maybe either go after and try to attack somebody or get into a better position if possible. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with... Hmm, what do I want to do with him? So right now I have two strength cubes. Those can be used for attacking and picking up blue gems. The yellow cubes are more for collecting the yellow gems or for defense and that. And the green cubes are mobility, so that lets us move around a little bit more. So right now I only have one green cube, so my character isn't going to be moving too terribly much. But let's see here. I am going to go ahead and spend that though. I do want to try to move here. So I'm going to go ahead and spend that to move two spaces. So this lets me spend or get a number of movement points. So my character has two. Each movement point allows me to move one space orthogonally, or I can spend two points of movement to move diagonally. So I'm going to go ahead and move two spaces orthogonally to that space there. From there, then I think I'm going to spend a strength cube to go ahead and make an attack onto the character over there. So with that, that player has a couple of options. All right, so with our character over here, if he has defensive tokens still on his board, he can choose to spend a yellow cube and negate all the damage that's done to him. Otherwise, he can simply remove one of these uh, and to resolve that damage, and then the player that attacked him is going to receive an advantage card. Now, if it was direct damage, or if he did not have any shields left, then it would go straight through to his character and do damage. At that point, then he would have to either give the other player a card of his from his hand, if he has any, or from the bottom of the deck. And then again, that card is going to go into one of those slots. So that's how play characters are going to start taking damage. And if a character is unable to give a card of their matching their character to an opponent, then they are going to be KO'd and knocked down. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and take a damage and add that back to the supply for that attack. And then my character does have one more blue cube if he wanted to spend that to do another attack action. But I think at this point, I'm going to hold off there. I don't want to spend all of my cubes just yet. And so I think I'm going to stop there at this point. So from there, then after you have completed that step, then you're going to move into the support steps. So then this active card is going to go into the memory, and then you're going to gain any cubes that are listed here. So I'm going to gain a white cube and another yellow cube. So we've got a lot of defense going on here, potentially. All right, then after I have completed that, then I'm ready to move on to the destiny phase. So during this phase, if there are any uh, danger tokens or shards in there, then I have to resolve each one of those that's in there by drawing a new card that will place it back out on the board. And it's also going to slowly advance the, the timer because more or less your game is going to be made up of a timer based on the deck that you have here. And as that deck files down, you're going to be placing event cards out here. And again, when that last event card is placed, the game is over and the players will have to total up their points. So right now, since there aren't any tokens in there, I don't have to resolve anything in the destiny phase. And so I'm going to move on to the fifth phase in the round, which is the nemesis phase. And again, since we're not playing with a nemesis in this game, this phase is simply going to be skipped over and I'll move into the end of turn phase. So at this point, if I have three or less, or if I have less than three cards in my hand, I get to draw a new card into my hand. So I, I get that. And then if any of your, if any of my heroes have been KO'd, I would be, have to resolve that point now where they're going to potentially get back up and handle all that. But right now I don't have to worry about that. All right, and then that is going to end that player's turn. So then it's gonna move over to the other player to take their turn. So again, this is gonna work exactly the same way. We could enter into a tactic step. Where we're gonna spend some of those cubes if we wanted to. I think at this point, I'm not going to again. So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So we've got a couple of white cubes, could be useful. Or we do have our character there as well. 
He's got a slower movement as well. I'm going to go ahead and go with, with my guy here. All right, so again, that'll go in there. I'm going to gain a green and a yellow. And then I'll move into his turn. So I think I'm going to go ahead and spend a green to go ahead and move. So his movement is two. So I'm going to go ahead and move diagonally. That'll take up both of my movement points. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend another cube. This one, again, is going to let me move. I'm going to move two. At this point, I do have a couple of options too. I could spend the blue cube I have to gain the blue shard. Now, the downsides of that is there is a danger token in there, which basically is a trap or something that hurts me. And so by collecting that cube, that would also activate that danger token and do direct damage to my hero. But I think it might not be a bad idea at this point to go ahead and jump ahead and grab one. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend that. That's going to pick up this shard and it'll go into that section there. I'm going to increase my value here by one, and then I'm going to gain one victory point for the walruses. Or for, not the walruses, for <laughs> the bears, as I am one of the bears. All right, so when I take damage now, I have to take the bottom card of the deck that matches my hero that took the damage and place it into the memory in the bottom of the memory stack. Now, cards that are added into there for this reason, do not we do not get the cubes that are for those cards. And then again, this is also going to be removed and added to that area, and that'll be deployed during the later steps. All right, so I think that is a good spot to stop, which again, I don't have any other cubes to really do much with at this point. So again, that is going to discard this to the memory section, and then I will gain that green and yellow. So both of our characters have a lot of yellow. All right, so from there, then again, we're going to move into the destiny phase. So again, during this phase now, we do have a couple of things to resolve. So with the blue shard, the first thing we're gonna do is draw a card. And then this is going to, if it is not an event card, if it was, it would be placed here. Since it's not, it's going to be placed next to the player's board, orientated towards the triangle here. So we have a triangle there and triangle there, so it points there. So that's going to tell us the quadrant that it is going to be placed in. And this is based on the four sections here. So it's not the overall board, it's, it's the player's board. So it's going to be placed in a bottom section in the middle or upper middle section of that. So I get to choose one of those different locations to place that in. All right, so then the first thing I'm gonna do is resolve this shard. So I'm gonna draw the top card of the deck. If it's a, an event card, it's going to be placed in the first open slot to the farthest left on this board. Otherwise, if it is a destiny card, this is going to line up with an arrow that is on my board. So I'll line it up there. And then this is going to tell me the quadrant within each one of the sections that this, could, this will be placed. So I can either place that in this area, in this area, uh, on that rune. So it would go here, or over in the, uh, my opponent's board, I can place it here. So a couple of interesting options here, and it will be a yellow rune. Uh, rune, so... Um, I'm going to place it over here, just... I think either way, it gives my opponent an opportunity to get it, but... That uh, at least keeps it away from them, as I don't necessarily know what my opponent's cards are. I'm hoping that maybe he doesn't have something to activate that. All right, that'll be discarded. And then again, we'll do the same thing with the danger token. All right, so this one again is going to be placed like that. So again, this one would be in one of these two quadrants in the middle section. So let's go ahead and place this over my opponent's section. Hopefully we can maybe get something over there at some point. All right, so again, that will end the destiny phase as I don't have any more tokens over here. And so we'll move into the, again, the nemesis phase is going to be skipped. So end of round phase, there's nothing to resolve or end of turn phase. So we're back over to our fellow players to take and I do have to draw a card for that. All right, so again, over to my tactics phase. 
I'm going to go ahead during my tactic phase and start building up my monument a little bit more. So in order to do that, the monument has four sections. You have the base, which is always going to be placed out at the beginning of the game during setup. And then you have the body, the head, and the flame. And there's a couple of things, once you get it completely built, there's a couple of things that you can potentially do with it, which are really, really cool. Uh, or also, it's going to potentially get you points at the end of the game, which is going to be helpful. Now, at the beginning of the game, some of these will also have different things that are going to be placed under them that'll basically unlock when you open that up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and spend, during the tactics phase, two cubes to be able to place the body. So then the body will be stacked on top of my section there. And then I get this advantage card. So this counts as basically a wild and will be placed in one of these three sections. I'm just going to drop it in there. And again, once I fill up all three of these sections, I can cash that in and gain a victory point for that. So that's a good first step for that. And I think that is about all I want to do during the tactics phase. So, Let's go ahead and move into my player turn. Let's go ahead and start off with her. So I'm gonna go ahead and place her card in there. That's going to get me a white and a yellow. Okay. As for her action, I'm gonna go ahead and spend a white and I'm gonna count that as a move cube. So it's gonna give me three movement points as she is very quick. I'm gonna use two of them to move diagonally and one to move down. Then let's go ahead. I will go ahead and attack. So again, I'm going to go ahead and attack uh, Freyma there. And she's gonna lose a shield again. And then again, I would gain a card for that. So I'm going to go ahead and place that in that section. And that would actually, and I forgot to grave, get one from him because I did do a damage, so I should have gotten a token there. So that would actually be my third one. So that's going to go ahead and slide those, and they'll just go back to the supply at that point. And then I'm going to gain a victory point for that. So now, again, we are all tied up. And... I think I'm going to hold off there. I don't want to spend too much at this point. So then again, that is going to slide over and that's going to give me a blue and a white cube. And there isn't anything to resolve here. So then I'm going to go and draw the top card and add it to my hands. All right, back over to the other player, my other player to go. Let's see what I got here. So some good options still. I don't really like this guy pounding on me though. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and activate him. So I'll go ahead and drop that in there. I'm gonna gain two white cubes. These two will go off to the side. And let's see what I wanna do here. I am going to go ahead and turn around and smack him for one. So that's basically going to just remove his shield. I could use that, but I think I'm going to just drop a shield. So again, I'm going to gain an advantage token. I'm going to turn to the side and gain this one. So that again, will raise that up and gain a victory points for the bears. That will go there. And what else do I want to do? I could move around. Could hit him again. At this point, he doesn't have any shields, so now I'm going to start do, doing damage. I think that might be a good move. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit him again. So at this point, he doesn't have any shields, so he cannot use anything there. And then I'm going to reveal until I find one of his cards. And this is going to be added directly into one of my areas. So I'm going to go ahead and add it there. And could move. I don't know if I really want to get like, totally hit by him if he gets to go again. Um, 
No, I think I'm going to hold off there. All right, so that is going to finish off my turn. Then the support phase, this is going to kick over. And I get two more white cubes from the support phase. And it's going to move over here. I want to again draw a card for that. So it's going to kick over. And again, it's going to be the one of the bottom two sections and one of these spaces here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here which since there's a character here that it cannot be placed and then this is simply going to be discarded and a new one will be drawn so that is a way for the players to potentially try to speed the game up as well so again we're going to go ahead and choose this one here so it would be one of these top two sections and it's going to be the top section that we choose so it could either be here or here again it cannot be placed in a section so if he chooses that one then he'd have to discard this card again and draw a new card so that's what i'm going to go ahead and do and just keep trying to cycle through some of this stuff so again it'll be that section in the top corner of either one and it's going to be a yellow so i'm going to go ahead and choose this one here as i do have my wizard up there that can potentially grab that pretty easily all right, that is going to end that step. And so we're going to move into the final phase of the turn. I get to draw a new card. And that's everything. All right, back over to the Walrus team. So with the Walrus team again, I am going to, I have my tactics phase, which I could build the head and keep working on, on that, which might not be a bad option. Uh, I think I will do that. So I'm going to go ahead and discard the two yellows and one of the whites. Because the head costs three. All right, so that will build the head. And then I get an inspiration card. So this gets added right to my hand. And this one gives me some more options to do things with. And this one, if I choose to use this card, lets me activate any one of the characters that I want to. And then again, it gives me additional bonus things and whatnot. So now I have a few more options. Hmm. So this one has uh, a rune that would activate his ability, which is an explosive trap. This hero deals uh, direct damage to an enemy that is adjacent or on the same uh, rune as uh, the damage token. I think I'm going to go ahead and start off with that one. So with that, it's going to go ahead and drop in there. So it's going to give me a green. And then that other token of his will be able to, he can activate that one time during his turn. Now, an important thing to point out with that is that if I spend a white cube to switch to a different uh, hero to activate, and I haven't spent that yet, then that hero could actually use it instead. But I do do like that. Unfortunately, I am not. And he is not adjacent to one of those tokens at this point. Other heroes are too far away, so what to do? I do have a couple of movement cubes. So maybe that wasn't the best choice. Maybe I should choose something else. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this one instead. That just gives me a white. Instead there. And I think I wanna start moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend a white to move. I'm just gonna go ahead and move diagonally. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and hold off there. So that's a that's a fairly safe spot for now. So 
I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Quick turn for my character here. I'm just going to gain another white. And that is that. There is nothing to do with the destiny phase. So, and I have three cards in my hand, so I can't draw another card at this point. So it is going to kick over to my opponent to start their turn. All right, so again, tactics. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and spend the two cubes to do a build action because I'm starting to fall behind here. So I'm going to go ahead and add my body there, and that will give me a action card. I'm going to go ahead and drop in the third slot. So again, I'm going to go ahead and convert those. This one will actually kick into here, and then I gain a victory point. So that is going to be the bears. So I'm at three now. And that takes care of that. I don't think there's anything else I want to do. I think I'm going to go ahead and activate him. All right. So that's going to give me a blue and a green. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just turn around and smack him with the blue. So again, I have to discard a card. There it is. That'll kick into one of those slots. And I'm going to go ahead and move two, one, two. I'm going to go ahead and spend a white one to collect. So that'll collect that shard. That gives me another one there and a victory point. All right, and I think that might be it for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick over here and that's gonna give me two more blue. And I'll draw, oh, I gotta do destiny. So let's go ahead and figure out where this is gonna go. And it's an event. All right, so with that, what that's gonna do is going to fill up that first slot there. There aren't any effects on it, otherwise we'd resolve those and then it is going to drop. It's going to start, we're going to start losing shards as time ticks by. So now there's only going to be three shards out on the board, which currently there are. And I completely forgot that yellow one sitting there that he could have probably gotten. All right, so this is going to go back to the supply. And again, that's going to end the phases. We don't have anything else to resolve there. So I will draw a new card. And that is the end of my turn. So again, kicking it over to the other player to go. Tactics at this point. To... All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my card here. Place that in there. I'm gonna get two whites. And then this symbol here lets me activate one of my character's abilities at some point during the round. So that's good. Um... So let's go ahead and let's go and do some, some interesting stuff here. So I'm going to spend a white cube first to do a push action. So that lets me push a opposing hero in a straight line. So that'll bump her up there. I'm going to spend a cube to move. So I'm going to go ahead and move there. And then again, I'm going to spend another cube to push again. So that'll push her into the trap. So that is going to trigger it. It'll do direct damage to her. So again, she's going to have to discard one of her cards because it's going to bypass her shields. And that will go straight into one of my sections. And those will be spent. Hmm. What do I want to do? I am going to. I'll go ahead and use that ability. So that says that this is Loki's blessing. So this hero uses the skill indicated on the action card in your memory or on your and the inflicted damage deck as though she were the hero represented on that card. 
So in my memory, I have Bjorn's, so I could use his ability. And this says that a ally either uh, gains two yellow cubes or a white cube. So I'm going to go ahead and give a white cube to... I'm going to go ahead and give it to him so that he could potentially use that. All right. Um, at this point, I don't think I really have anything else that I want to do. Well, I could do that as well. But yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there. All right, so then I have to deploy this again. So this time it's going to kick over here. So that's going to either be this section, which would put it here, or this section, which would put it here. Um, which I do not want in either one of those, so I'm going to go ahead and place it on him, which is going to immediately have me placing it somewhere else. So this will go into the discard, and a new one will come out. So this is, again, going to be this section, which this time is on the bottom two sections. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it on down there, and that will finish that off. All right, uh, that is the end of my turn. So then this is going to kick over here. I'm going to get two whites into my section as I have resolved everything else. And then I get to draw a new card. And that will end my player's turn over there. So back over to our player's turns here. I've got some options here. What do I want to do with this? And his ability. Um, well, with those shards sitting right there, that, that seems like it's just too sweet of an option to go with. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to do anything during my tactics phase. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there. That's going to give me a yellow and a green. And I'm going to go ahead and spend the yellow right away to collect that yellow shard there. It's going to get me another one there and another victory point. So the bears have been moving up on that track quite heavily. And what else do I want to do? I could just keep going after those at this point. So I think I'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and move. So that's going to do that. And I'm going to move again. Just go there. And I'm going to spend a blue to collect this one here. So again, that'll bump that up. And it gives me another one. So the bears are rocking and rolling here. All right. So I think that is going to be it. I will draw a Oop, Nope, not yet. we got to bring out some new ones here. So... For this one, it is going to be bottom quadrant, top spot. Oh, so neither one of those are, is a good option uh, for, for my character here. So that just puts it right in front of my opponents. Um, so I guess I'll put it there. And then for the next one. So this one has the top quadrant. I think I will place it up here because I have that area I have a lot of control over. So that would be a good spot for hopefully. All right, then I draw a new card and that is going to end up. Oh, I got to drop this into the memory section, which gets me a yellow and a green. Okay. And that'll finish that off. All right, over to my other character here. So the walruses are way behind. We've really got to do something here. All right. Um, what do I want to do with this? Let's see.
All right, so I basically have all of that character. And I've got another one coming up too. So, well, I'm gonna go ahead and spend one during the tactics phase to collect. So that lets me draw three cards from the top of my deck, which are two more of him and Freda, which is what I was kind of hoping for. And then I have to drop, uh, if I have more than three cards in my hand, I have to place the remaining cards to get me back down to three at the bottom of my deck. So I'm going to go and drop this one. I'll drop one of these. And I guess I'll do that. He's got three of those cards. Oof. Okay. So I think Frida is probably my best option here. So I'm going to go ahead and play her. I'm going to get a white cube back. Let's go back to my hand. And starting her turn, I'm going to go ahead and spend the white to count as a blue collect. So that's going to get me that gem. That gives me one there. And it's going to move me up one on the track there. Then, let's see. I will go ahead and move. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to go ahead and push. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and attack. So he's going to lose a shield, and I gain an advantage card. And then I'm going to go ahead and push. So that will push him into that space, which is going to trigger the trap. And then he got, he can't go in there, so then that will trigger that. And he's going to do direct or take direct damage, so then I get one of his cards. And then these are going to clear because I have three cards, and I'm going to gain a point for that. So that gives me another one there. All right, I think that is pretty much, well, pretty much definitely all I can do. I don't have any more cubes, so that's going to go away. I'm going to get one for that. And then I have to resolve the destiny. So first off, let's go ahead and place that shard. So that is going to drop it into the top quadrant of one of those spots in the middle space. So I'm going to place it there. And then the danger token is going to be in the bottom quadrant. In, I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here because it can't be placed on a character. So that'll discard that and a new card comes out. Ooh, we have our second event card. So this one is tactical training. So each player immediately performs the coordinate action without spending any cubes. And then there's also an additional victory. Survivors at the end of the game, the players with the least number of, of heroes uh, with at least one shield gain a victory point. Players with the least at least one that has at least one shield. Okay. All right. So then first we have to handle the tactics. So each one of us can do a coordinate if we want to. I've got one of each, and they're, eh, I'm, I'm good there. I think I will do it with this character, though. So I'm going to go ahead and draw three. All right, and then I have to discard down, so that gives her, gives her some more options. So we have some mobility. So I think I want to keep that one for sure. Traps really around us, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop those two. So these two go on the bottom of the deck. I can choose the order, doesn't really matter. Yeah. All right, that takes care of that, and then we still have to place that out. So now it is bottom section in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so we're getting down there. And so I think at this point, 
that is pretty much it. And I have three cards in hand. So that's into my turn. So back over to the other player to go. And they've got three gems sitting up there. They're just begging to be taken. Ugh. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. And I'm not going to do any tactics things. So this one gets me two greens. And I get that blue ability, which this one is the strength of the forefathers. An ally in the same zone or adjacent to him gains two shields and two yellows. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right away and give the two to Freema here. And then she also gains one of her shields back. So her defense is way back up top. Okay, then he's got three shards sitting right next to him there. So might as well go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a blue to pick up that one there. That'll get him one there and a victory point. And I'm going to do the yellow to pick that one up. And he's at max, so that's not going to matter there. And then I'm going to go ahead and move. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and spend the white to attack. So she's going to lose her shield, and then I gain an advantage card, which gives me two. I just need one more to gain something there. And I just have greens left. So... I'm going to go ahead and spend one of those and kind of shift up here. Okay, that is going to finish that off. So then I'm going to go ahead and move into that phase. I'm going to get a yellow and a green. So I got a lot of movement options. And then we have deployments. We have two more gems to go out. All right, so that one will place it in top quadrant middle. Either way, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and place it over here. And next one is going to be top quadrant again, bottom corner. So either here or here, I'm going to choose there because I want to keep advancing. I've got a lot of good points here. And there's the third one. All right, so the Gift of the Fools. At the end of the game, the player or players who have the least victory points gain one. So that would help the walruses. And then this is still out, so another card is going to be bottom quadrants, top corner, and it's a blue. So I guess I'll put it over there. Either way, it's not the best option, but that's what we'll do. All right. Then I have two cards, so I'll draw a new card, and that is going to end my turn. So we're back over to my player over here. And again, we have a couple options with her. All right. Might just be good to grab some, some mobility there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That'll give me two greens. And I think that'll do. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one of those to move. I'll go ahead and move there. And then I'll spend the white to pick that up. So that's going to get me another blue. And that's going to get another point. And I think that's all I'm going to do at this point. So I will end there. It's going to get me a green and a yellow. And then I have to deploy, which is the bottom section. Yellow. Nope, over here. All right, it's getting down to it. And so then it's going to move over to the other player to go. Do I want to do any tactics at this point? I don't think so. 
All right, so we don't have, we're down to one gem, so I do have to eliminate some gems here. So we'll go ahead and cut out that last one there. So, and this one, to be fair. All right, so there's just one gem left on the board. Which he can get to. So I'm going to go ahead and take that and do his thing. All right, so that's going to get him two green. So we've got tons of mobility now. And his ability is Hidden Traps. Uh, this hero performs a collect or attack action in either two orthogonally adjacent zones or in his own zone and one orthogonally adjacent zone to it. Hmm, interesting. All right, that'll be fun. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start off by moving. I'm going to go ahead and move down two. And then I'm going to go ahead and use his ability, so that will allow me to attack that character basically for free. And he has no defense at this point, so it's going to just do a direct damage to him, so he's going to lose a card. And that will go into this section because he already has a card there. And then I have some more green and yellow. So I don't have enough to pick up the blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and move I think there. I think that's about all I can do at this point. So I think I will end there. That's going to give me a green and a yellow. And then there's no shards, so then I'm going to go ahead and kick that down. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go ahead and take that action back. So I'm going to go ahead and drop those in there. Take that back and keep him here for now. So instead, I think I'm going to go ahead and move here for that one. Then I'm going to spend this to throw him. Another one to move, and another to throw. And that'll kick him into there. That's more direct damage. So he loses another card. I'm going to find one of his cards at this point. And there's one. All right, so again, that'll go into his section there. And that will take care of that. So that was I spent a lot more, but that works out. And I did some more damage to him. Okay. So now that will take care of that. And then we have to deploy. And so it is bottom section top arc. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it there. And then now that we have the three exposed, we there's a little bit of a, a kick up process that happens. Anytime it is not uh, the active player's turn, there is another card that is drawn and resolved. Um, so if it is not an event card, nothing happens. So it's the, the game is slowly picking up pace now at this point. All right, back over to my starting character here. I forgot to draw a card for him. So, We need some more points here. So I have something way, way over there. And she's over there. I got two yellows. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go with Freda there. So I'm going to use her card. That's going to get me a white and a yellow. We'll see what we can do here. All right. Um, So I think I'm going to spend a move action to move over to and another move action to push. That's going to trigger a direct damage onto my opponent. She's going to lose another card. And 
I'm going to go ahead and do an attack on to him as well. He's going to lose his token there, and that'll give me an advantage card. Okay. All right. I think that's good at this point. So, um, got to move into this moving over. So I'm going to get a yellow, a blue and a white. And then we do have a danger token out. So that is top quadrant, middle section. Ooh, that would be right next to her if I put it there, but if I put it over there, it's pretty much useless. Yeah, I'll put it there. All right, that is the only one to handle there. So then draw a new card. And that is my turn. So back over to the other player to go. We got here. So we've got two of her and one of him. I have no blue with him. Yeah, blue. I'm gonna go ahead and go with her. It's gonna give me a blue and a green. All right. And I am adjacent to him, so I'm going to use a blue right away to attack him. Again, he doesn't have anything to defend with, so he's going to have to lose a card. And he is out of cards completely. Nope, no, he's not. I got a couple at the bottom. All right, so that'll kick over there. And... What else do I want to do? I'm going to go ahead and move to there. And I think I'm going to hold off there. All right, so again, there are uh, nothing to, to handle here. And so this is going to move over. And we have a blue and a green. And that is it. So drawing a card and back over to the other player to go. All right. So I've got a damage sitting right there. All right, what do we got here? So that could be good. All right, I think I'm going to activate that. It's going to give me a white, and it lets me use the, the rune on my card. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a move action to move here. And I'll do another move action to move here. All right, then I'm going to trigger my ability here. So it says an explosive trap. Uh, this character deals direct damage to an enemy that is adjacent to or on the same rune as an, a danger. So he is adjacent to it. So I'm going to do direct damage to him instead by passing his shields and gaining a card that is my third card so again these will kick down and i will gain another victory point for that so that moves me up to five so i'm closing the gap and then i might as well attack him for one so there's that and i gain an advantage card all right I think that's about it. So that is going to end my turn and it's going to kick over to the other player. All right, so we've got all kinds of things here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do two with her. 
fill Sarah up completely, or the board up completely. She's gonna do a move action to move down to, and she's gonna use another green to push, which is gonna push him into there, again, doing direct damage to this character. So I think I do have, yes, that one there. All right, uh, that's going to kick into there. And then I'm gonna move over and attack him again. Again, he doesn't have any shields, so slowly losing his cards. And that is pretty much it. I could hit him one more time. Sure, why not? All right, so that is another card out of there. And he is out of cards at this point. Ooh, I forgot to drop that over there, so he should, he should have a blue. All right, and I should have drawn a card. Oh, no, I know. That's not there, because I'm out of cards. All right, uh, then we have to redeploy, and that one is going to be top quadrant, back corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it into that one, so I can't place it there, so another card comes out. So again, this is top quadrant, bottom section. I'm gonna drop it right back there. And then again, it is non-active player's turn. So another card comes out just for that. All right, so we are almost to the bottom here. There's only a few cards left. This is almost the end of the game. We'll see what happens at the last second here. All right, uh, then I will draw a card for that player and we are over to my starting player to go. So it is just Bjorn and I have no white cubes. I do have one on, on him though. I could spend, I think, during this phase to do a collect a collection. So I think I'll do that. I'll do that to draw three cards. And it is all this guy all day long. Okay. So which ones do I want to drop? So I'll hold on to that. I think I'll hold on to this and this, and I'll drop those two. Okay. All right. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and play the two whites to gain those. And I'm going to go ahead and spend one to move. I'll do another one to move, and then I'm going to go ahead and attack. All right, so again, he has nothing, so it's going to do direct damage to him. And that's pretty much all I can do. So that's going to kick over to white. And that's going to end my turn. So another card drawn. All right, back over to my guys over here. And I forgot to do that, so should have got two there as well. Not doing too good here. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna go in for the kill. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that one. It's gonna give me a white. I'm gonna spend it right away to move over and attack. And at this point, that character does not have any cards, so he has been knocked out. All right, so that is gonna get me a card here. So I'm gonna place it over there. That will cash that out and move one over. 
and that's going to get me a victory point. So that is the bears, so they're up to nine. And I think that's about all I want to do. So that'll kick over and one. All right, and then a card. And that is it, Gift of the Gods. Each uh, hero that has no black cubes gains a white. All right. Well, that's pretty much the game, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so at this point, then we're gonna move into the final scoring and figure out how we're doing here. All right, so let's just kind of go through all these. So survivors at the end of the game, the players with the at least one hero that has one is going to gain. So each one of us have that. Gift of the Fools, at the end of the game, the player or players who have the least victory points gain one. So Walruses pick up one there. And then we have this one here. So the player or players who have the most segments gain two. So one, two, so we are right there, nine to 10. Player or players that have the least segments are gonna lose one. So now we are tied up at nine. And then we also have the murderer. All right, so then with this one, the player players who have the most uh, trophies gain two. And I think I would have gotten one for him. So technically that would bump the bears back up two points. So that was super close. And then they would have lost one. So in the end of the game, it really came down to that last thing. If they weren't able to do that, then we would have ended up with a tie. And then there's a couple of tiebreaker uh, results there. But very, very close game. So I hope... Well, that was a close one. It was just there. The Bears were able to squeak out a victory over the Walruses. So I hope you found the video interesting and helpful in deciding whether or not this is one that you want a late pledge for. Let me know in the comments down below if you have decide to, why or why not. I'd love to start a conversation with you and let me know if you notice anything that I got wrong. Again, with this one, the rules are in flux. So some of these things might change or be a little bit different when you finally get your copy of the game. But as always, let me know in the comments down below. I love starting a conversation conversation and thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video and leave me feedback on it. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.